Hey everyone, Cleo here, welcome to my channel and today we, I guess we're going to explore some of the reasons why I might not have as many followers as some do on booktube. Uh, but so all kidding aside, uh, today I'm participating in the book to net all-star charity challenge which was created by Rachel Marie as a way to come together as a community and help in any way that we can to support people who need it in these times of COVID-19. So the, uh, there is a possibility for each of us to donate to a certain relief fund. Uh, the relief fund will be chosen at a later stage, um, but I will link the link <laughs> I will put a link down below uh, that you can use to donate if you feel like it, if you can have the opportunity to do so. Um, but Rachel is also kind is kind enough to also support a charity herself up to an amount of 75 euros by donating one euro for each uh, person who takes part in the challenge. And so I definitely wanted to do my part and to film this uh, tag video and send it your way. Now the concept behind the challenge is we are looking at a list of uh, very popular authors, authors that are very widely read on uh, booktubes. So really about uh, authors that are highly cherished on booktube that you come across a lot of the times and seeing whether you've read them or not. And this is going to it's basically a pile of shame for me because the majority of these I haven't read. So uh, a big reason for that is that the majority of this list is going to be YA books. And while I loved YA from the age of, I don't know, 10 until 20 or something like that, I kind of fell out of love with the genre during my 20s. And then I've been trying to get back into it in the later part of the 20s and now in my early 30s. But I have just not been having any luck with the genre so far. So uh, without further ado, let's dive into it. And I'm going to immediately start with an exception to what I've just said. And that is uh, Angie Thomas. Uh, so I have read uh, The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas and I absolutely adore this book. I thought it was so well done. It was such an important YA book as well because it's dealing with a very heavy topic and it manages to bring that across not just in a way that you uh, get a full grasp of the subject matter and you uh, are able to fully emote and stuff like that but it also delivers a very strong um, character line for our main character. Uh, a very strong character line that doesn't have all that much to do with romance neither which is one of the problems that I usually have with YA um, or like something that for me in any case in YA can often lead down paths that uh, don't necessarily interest me all, all that much but so uh, yeah I loved uh, The Hate You Give I immediately bought On The Come Up when it came out and I have yet to read it so I really do want to at some point get around to that book and hopefully discover that I really love all of Angie Thomas's writing and it wasn't just The Hate You Give but yes this is a clear exception for me to the uh, difficulties I've been having with YA so this is one of those cases in which I re-explored YA and uh, was successful in doing so. So highly recommend The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. Next up on this list is the Shatter Me series by Tahara Mafi. Nope, I did not read this. Um, I will also say that I don't have any interest in reading this and I don't even know what it's about. But so I have, as this is a book mentioned on this list. It's a book that's being constantly mentioned by people on booktube. Uh, so I must have heard the premise at some point or another or I've heard people talking about it a lot of the time but none of them have ever sparked an interest in this series in me so I will also keep it that way. Uh, I don't have an interest in the series and I probably will never get around to reading it. Uh, next up, since two weeks I can say I have read this author and that is... Lee Bardugo. So uh, I have not read this book. Ugh. I have read Six of Crows two weeks ago. Uh, read it in one day and this is actually part of a secret video that I'm filming so I'll be tipping the veil for you guys as well. So uh, in spirit of what I've told you before, me trying to get back into YA, I am actually filming a video in which I am reading some extremely popular booktube uh, book series and 
Six of Crows duology was one of them. So I have read Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. I am still planning to read Crooked Kingdom. Did I like Six of Crows? I liked it. I definitely liked it. But am I in love with the series the way that a lot of people are? No. Sadly, I feel like it falls down some passages that it, it, it has a certain plot development that I feel is done a lot of times in YA and that I just don't like anymore. So sadly, I also felt like this one fell short a little bit for me. I liked character developments. I liked the overall plot of this. Did I predict the ending? Yes. Um, did I, do I want to see what happens in book two? Partly, but I, but I basically want to read book two because I want book two, book two to do something that I don't predict. So hopefully book two will do that for me. Next series is The Cruel Prince series by Holly Black. I have not read this one. I hear very mixed things about it. And so I think I'm going to steer clear. As a person who has difficulties getting back into uh, YA fantasy or YA in general, but mainly YA fantasy, I was never all that into other YA genres, mainly just YA fantasy. So as I'm having difficulties going back into YA fantasy, I don't think a series in which like people who are in love with YA fantasy are divided is going to be one for me. So uh, I'm passing on uh, The Cruel Prince. Next up we have The Bone Witch by Rin Chupeko. I have never heard of this one. Uh, really, like maybe somebody has mentioned it in, in some video that I've seen, probably. But uh, I definitely haven't heard it often enough and it's not something that stuck with me, so no, sorry. Next up, this is part of my uh, secret project that I'm filming, and that is V. Schwab. So Darker Shades of Magic series is actually a series that gives me shame about myself. Because I was interested in the series, uh, like somebody I knew was reading the series was telling me like it's super good, it's a, it's a fantasy series about like different types of London. I love books set in London. I love books set in cities. I want to do a video all about books set in London at some point. Uh, and this person was also, for example, a person who reads mostly adult fantasy. So uh, like for me, being somebody who mostly likes adult fantasy and has, is having the difficulties with YA fantasy, this was the best recommendation I could get. Um, and then this book got kind of hyped and I have difficulties reading hyped books. So I put it off. I never continue, I never picked it up. Uh, I didn't even buy it until very recently. And so I definitely want to um, change that now. I want to read this and I totally hope that I'm going to love this because this is set up to be my book, you know, a book set in London with magic system, with parallel universes, hopping between the universes. What's not to love? So hopefully I will love this one as well. Next up we have Marissa Meyer and the Lunar Chronicles. Have not read it, don't really have an interest in it. Don't know too much about it neither, you know, based on the cover it's like sci-fi I guess. Um, but I am assuming just because of I'm just assuming this based on the fact that the first book is called Cinder, but uh, I'm assuming it's some side, it's kind of going to be like heavy on the romance because I think it's like a Cinderella retelling. This is something that I mainly dis dislike in YA, so I probably won't go into this series. Then we have Adam Silvera, no interest. Um, so as I said before, I did really like YA fantasy when I was young, but uh, I never really had an interest in other stuff. I did read like Sister of the... Uh, Traveling Pants and I did read uh, Gossip Girl. I didn't necessarily have a lot of interest in Gossip Girl. It's just like um, I didn't think it was very good. It's just like I wanted to see where the story was going but I didn't think like the quality of the writing was anything uh, really expected. I mean the quality of the writing was really bad. So like this uh, was already a bad example for me. I did really like Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants but even in adults, I don't like these types of stories. The contemporary that I like are like the hard-hitting ones or the ones that are more like on the side of literary fiction. So I don't think that I'm going to be picking up Adam Silvera anytime soon. Next up, one I read, Cassandra Clare. So around the time when I was falling out of love with fantasy, so early 20s, somewhere around there, I read The Mortal Instrument by Cassandra Clare. I liked it, I gave it three star rating, but it was really one of those books that came at that time where I was starting to feel like 
been there, done that. I felt it was very predictable. I did some stuff that I really didn't like, like the like revelation about Jace's um, parents, parentage that then turned out to be not true. But in any case, that was definitely something that really irked me. I really hated that uh, spin in the story. And so, yeah, um, I didn't... I enjoyed it. I thought it was enjoyable, but I didn't think it was anything else. I am planning to go back into Cassandra Clare for that video that I am planning. So you will see more of this from me at some points. Uh, and I, but I have already read it. Pat on the shoulder there. The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Everybody in booktube was raving about the Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo two years ago I think, uh, they are still doing so at this point, so I decided I also wanted to read this. Also it was easy for me to get into this one because it is adult fiction, so I was like it's closer to my um, to the stuff that I usually read, so uh, there was a bigger likelihood of me uh, also loving it. I also really wanted to feel the excitement that all of these people were feeling about how they loved Evelyn Hugo, how they loved this book, Sadly, it was not for me. I didn't dislike it, you know. I gave it a three-star rating, I think. I enjoyed it. It was an enjoyable read, but I didn't have any special connection with it. I didn't think it was all that clever in what it was trying to do. I thought the execution was good, but it just didn't... Like, there was nothing to elevate it over an okay read for me. So sadly, I do fall out of, um, like... I am one of those atypical booktubers in that respect, because the majority of people that I see reading this book on booktube do really like it. I have seen people who also didn't like it, or who also thought it was overrated. But uh, the majority seem to really love it, and I really am jealous of those people. I have since also read um, Daisy Jones and the Six, and I also didn't really like that one. So I think I'm going to stop trying to read Taylor Jenkins reads. Then we get to Lainey Taylor, Strange Dreamer this one is, and this is also for that secret video. Haven't read it yet. Uh, and then we get... We're just going to go further and further into the shame because I can already tell you that of everything that is following I haven't read a single one. So next up Illuminate by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. Somewhat interested in reading this just because it's sci-fi and it's like um, multimedia, but um, I also think a lot of people, um, like a lot of people recommend this series if you like the Themis Files. And I read the first book in the Themis Files and I thought it was okay. It didn't do anything special for me. I mean, it didn't spark a lot of excitement in me. I didn't feel connected to the characters a whole lot and stuff like that. So I don't know whether this series is going to be for me because I still need to retry the team files first. Next up another sci-fi, so this is Sight by Neil, St Neil Schusterman. Um, I don't know, at some point I was really excited about this one, there was really a big shot of me uh, getting around to it, um, but then I started to see, I don't know, I just, I lost some interest. So uh, a lot of people who I follow, watch, have read the series, absolutely love it. People who I know also mostly read literary fiction, who have read that series, love it. So there is a chance of me really liking this, but then I've also seen other people that I that have um, a love for like adult fantasy the way that I do, that don't like sight. So I'm unsure about this one, so let me know down below for this one. What are some of the reasons why you think I should read sight? What are its main selling points? Next up, Sarah J. Mass. Haven't read it. Uh, so this is, along with most of these books, these became popular in YA after I was reading YA. Uh, and I think that my impression, at least, of these books is that they are very romance heavy. And so I don't necessarily have an interest in reading them. Um, next up, another one that I will be reading for that secret video, which is not that secret anymore. Uh, I will already warn you guys though that it's gonna take me a while to get around to these so don't expect this next month or the month after that and that is An Ember in the Ashes by Saba Tahir. I wasn't particularly interested in this one I mean 
I liked parts of its premise and stuff like that when, when I heard people talking about it. On the other hand, I only have, like there are only a few people that I feel mention this as like their top choices for uh, YA fantasy. Uh, and so I kind of felt like it might not be worth it for me to invest into it just because I have so many difficulties getting back into YA fantasy, but I have been seeing a lot of people recently who, who have really loved this series, who are very passionate about it. It might just be that I'm just like watching videos from the correct people this time and that before I was watching the mostly the negative aspects of this book and now I'm watching mostly the positives. But I am definitely a lot more hopeful for this series at this point. And I think actually at this point it might be one of the series that I have most high hopes for. I know it's going to be quite romance heavy I think, um, but there are some elements to the premise that might interest me. We'll see. Next up, Sean McGuire. So uh, this author has many different series uh, and I think they are also from very different genres. I don't know enough about her uh, published work, so I know she published like Middle Game, which is one of uh, Lala's favorite books and just be for that reason I should want to I want to read it and then she also uh, published like I don't know Wayward Children series I think um, I don't know I have some interest in reading this but also not enough uh, I feel like I hear too many mixed stuff about the Wayward Ch Children series too much like I really love this one but didn't really care about this one to kind of make me hesitant to go into that one. I think mostly I'm going to, there's a bigger chance of me going into middle game because I have only heard very good things about that from both Lala and Kate who I both really love so yeah I think that that is definitely a big possibility for me to read. Getting down to the wire, The Poppy War by RF Kuang, high on my list. I have almost purchased it at some point at some point but then uh like at that point i think it was a pre-order at that point and i was like no 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 because pre-ordering here in belgium i feel like it doesn't work whenever i pre-order i have to wait forever for my book like a week after it's published is when i finally get like shipping notifications for it so uh i've stopped pre-ordering stuff from at least from a belgian website uh, and so I didn't pre-order at that point. I was waiting for it to come out in the bookstore and then they didn't have it in the bookstore. So I guess it kind of like fell through their cracks. They didn't realize that this was possibly a new, very much uh, hyped uh, fantasy book. But so they didn't have it and then uh, it just kind of fell off of my like priority list um, because I was re just have so many other books that I want to read. And so I haven't bought it. I am keeping myself from buying it at this point because I want to reduce the amount of unread books on my shelves and for that I need to read a lot more first. So yeah, uh, but I definitely want to read it. Uh, also like uh, Daniel from the channel, Daniel Green, put it in his top 10 fantasy series of the moment. So uh, yeah, I want to read it. And then let's end on a down note, I guess, with To All The Boys I've Loved Before by Jenny Han. I'm interested in seeing the Netflix adaptation. I'm not so interested in reading the series. Um, mainly it's YA contemporary, it's romance centered. Uh, I don't think it's, it's something for me. But so in any case, I've loved talking to you guys about these series, even though I've <laughs> definitely not read a lot of them, but it's very, it's nice to give my reasons for not going into some of them or like maybe discuss with you guys down below why I should go into some that I don't have an interest in at the moment. So definitely let me know down below if there's anything that uh, I should be reading here. I won't promise that I'm going to read it because uh, I also don't want to read too much stuff that I might not be interested in or get to support, get like excited about stuff and then get disappointed when I read them. So for now just know that there are some of these series that are definitely going to get read that are in the process of being read right now. So um, if you're interested to see what I will find, about, what I will think of them, then subscribe and uh, you will at some point in the coming months hopefully see this video pop up. But in any case, uh, the most important thing about this video, of course, is to spread awareness for this relief fund, for this uh, charity challenge. And so uh, if you have the opportunity, I definitely encourage you guys to look for the link in the description down below and to donate whatever you can give 
if it's just a euro, it's just a euro, but if all of us should give just a euro or whatever your currency is, then we can definitely end up with a very nice amount. So uh, thank you guys for watching and see you guys next time. And to everybody, keep safe, stay home, do whatever your government is telling you is in your best interest and in the best interest of everybody. See you.